Hey guys, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're gonna spend a little time looking at the mixer. And I'm not gonna be doing mixes, but we're gonna talk about the mixer and its relationship to channels on the receiver. Because outside of mix recipes, which Mr. Skyrider was in early in true to form, he said, I'd really like to know how to mix throttles with rudder for my twin engine. Other than those types of questions, which I consider to be mix recipes, the very next the top question I get is, always related to inputs and mixes and channels. So not too long ago, I got a question about somebody, somebody said, hey, how do I add a second aileron to my configuration? And I, I said, I said, well, just put it on channel two and, and add another aileron. And he said, well, no, that's where my throttle is and, or my, my elevator or whatever. It doesn't matter what it was, but that's a, that's a thing, right? The, the problem is that when you come from other platforms, especially I think Spectrum, although I'm not a Spectrum user, you guys probably know that. Uh, but when you come from other platforms, other platforms are very particular about things like channel order. And when it comes to Edge TX, it's not. Edge TX doesn't care about channel numbers or order. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, I saw another question just the other day about the default channel order, AETR. And they said, what does that mean? All that means is that when you first set up the radio, it's going to deploy when you create a new model. It's going to create them in AETR order, aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder order. That's it. That's all it means. Um, you can move stuff around however you want. And that's really what I want to get into today was to give you guys some concrete evidence on the relationship between the mixer, which is what governs the channels and the, and the relationship on your receiver to the aircraft. Okay. And the way, here's how I'm going to do that. A very specific plan in mind on how we're going to do this. The first thing I want to do is show you guys that I have my little RCVR1 model, and I'm going to show you I've got my rudder. You can see the rudder up there moving, right? There's the rudder. That's moving. I've got some ailerons configured, so ailerons, both the ailerons are moving right here and here. And then I've got my elevator, okay? I'm going to disconnect everything except the ailerons. We're just going to start with the ailerons, and that's it. So we'll disconnect the ailerons, and I think I gotta, I'm going to have to remember this one. I should have tagged these, and I didn't. I should have. So aileron number two, I have two ailerons on this one, channel six right there, and I also have channel one. So what I want to do is move all the other stuff out, because I don't care about any of it. We do care about power, got to have power. So that's all that I'll have connected is my power, and I just lost my other aileron. But that's all right, I'll show you guys a way to find it, it's easy to do. Okay, so all I've got connected now is the one aileron, that's it. One aileron, no elevator. No rudder, nothing else is connected. I simply have the one aileron right here. That lead is for power only. That's all it does. If I remove that, it removes power. It's power only. Okay, so in this model, now what I wanna do is we're gonna zoom in a little bit, right? Cause I wanna focus now, we're only looking at the ailerons and we're looking at the radio configuration. So that's all we care about. And I wanna, we're gonna delete everything else. I'm just gonna get rid of everything else. It's gonna go away. We're gonna delete it all. So the idea here, again, is to give you some concrete understanding of the relationship between the mixer and your pins on your receiver. All right, so all these other things are gone. Okay, so now all I have left on this radio is one single aileron, okay? That's, that's all I've got. Now, the thing about it is, it, the reason, it, this is a terrible receiver to use as the example because it's marked aileron elevator throttle. The reason this one's marked that way is because it's also a stabilizer. All right, if you have any other non-stabilized receiver, none of this other stuff matters. So here's what I wanna show you. On this receiver, I have my aileron connected right there to pin number one. And on my mixer, I have my aileron connected to channel one. Now, the aileron is defined from the input. So if you go to the input page, here's where I define that aileron. So I call it, the input name I gave it is aileron, and the source that I gave it is AIL, the AIL right there is the stick itself, that's the stick. So the input creates a logical map between the stick and the radio, and it, it creates what's called an input. That input is now called aileron, okay? So now we're gonna go over to the mixer, and you can see that for the mixer, the thing that I'm using as the source for this mix, the source right here, is that input that I just created. Remember that input's connected to this stick. That's why that aileron works over there when I move this thing back and forth, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is go into the mixer and show you if, the, if I take that mix line or that aileron and move it, I'm gonna move it. So I'm gonna highlight it and I'm gonna go down to move and we're gonna go down to channel two 
and hit paste. And when I do that, notice that this aileron now is assigned to pin two. When I move this stick, the aileron does nothing. See, nothing. It just removed the input, the stick, from pin number one and put it on pin number two. So here's how I'm gonna prove it to you. Even though the receiver says elevator on it, I don't care, it's still pin two. The only reason it says elevator is because that has to do with the stabilization function. So if you if you don't put them in this order, the and, and the stabilizer moves, it has to, you know, if it pitches down, it wants to correct via the elevator. So it has to know where your elevator is. That's how the receiver does it. Outside of a stabilizer list, none of this stuff matters, all right? So I'm just gonna take this aileron and move it from channel one, and I'm gonna put it on channel two. Now, when I put that on channel two, watch what happens. You see how this aileron stick now moves that aileron? You see it? It's moving the aileron, right? That's because I moved the aileron wire to channel two, and I moved my aileron input to channel two. I can do the same thing on channel three. Now, here's why I'm, I'm saying this to you guys. When I, when I did this, when, when, I, when I got the question about dual ailerons, I said, just put it on channel two. He goes, well, I can't. My throttle's there. Or my elevator's there. It doesn't matter. Move it around. You can move stuff however you want. So I'm going to go ahead now, and what I'm going to do is I have to find my other aileron, and I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. What I'm going to do is, because I'm on channel two, you can use this as a trick to find things. So I'm on channel two. I don't want to lose my original aileron, so I'm going to have to hold on to that. So I'm just going to plug a wire into channel two and move. And nope, that's a flap. Don't want that one. So let's see. I think it's one of the short ones. I think it might be this one. I think it's a short one. I should have marked them. Bad on me for not marking them. I should have marked them. Okay, so try this one. There we go. I found it. Second wire, not bad. Okay, so there's the, the, there's the starboard aileron, all right? You guys, hopefully you can see that moving on the video. There's the starboard aileron. aileron. And here's the port aileron. Now, two ailerons. Now, only one's gonna move. You guys know, does anybody know why only one's gonna move? One's, only one is gonna move because in the mixer, I've only defined the input aileron and I've only connected it to one channel. So I've only connected to one channel. That's why only one moves. Now, if I take that input and copy it, say I'm gonna highlight this thing and, and, and hit copy, and then I'm gonna go to channel one and hit paste, now what I've done is I've connected the input aileron to both channels one and two. So I've connected it to both. Now if I move my stick, notice how both of those ailerons are moving, all right? So it doesn't matter if it's channel one or channel two. That's the thing, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if your aileron, your elevator's there. And again, you have to ignore the fact this is a stabilized receiver. If you have a stabilized receiver, that's different. Again, it's because the stabilizer, the stabilizer has to know where the control surfaces are to accommodate correctly when it sees a pitch change. But if you're not using a stabilized receiver or if you don't have the stabilizer turned on, the only thing that you have to marry up are these pin numbers, one through six and then one through six. That's all you have to marry up, okay? I can move my ailerons. Look, I, I just want to prove it again. I'm moving my ailerons. There's two ailerons. They're on two different channels. So I'm going to prove it again. I'm going to take aileron number two here on channel two, and I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move it down to channel four, okay? So when I do that, now notice only one aileron is working. You see that? Only one aileron is working because I took off the one that was on pin two. If I want it to work again, I can take the one that was on pin two and I can move it over to pin four. I move that on pin four, look, my ailerons are working again, okay? So that's the correlation I'm trying to drive with you guys and help you understand. The, the pin numbers on this device, the pins one through six, are related to the mix lines one through six on the mixer. All right, it's as simple as that. Now what I'd like to do is just to give you one example on mixing, I told you I wasn't gonna do mix recipes today, but I do wanna give one little example because I constantly get asked uh, about mixes. So in order for me to find this, I have to disconnect something that's known and I'm going to connect this guy back in and we're going to move. All right. Uh, that's nothing. That must be a flap or something. Let's see. I want to try and get the elevator or rudder. I think the rudder would be a good one. I'd like to get the rudder. That'd be ideal. Nope. That's the elevator, of course. All right, guys.
little dead air here. Oh, there's a flap. No. Why am I missing the rudder? Hmm. I'm gonna have to hold them and check them, I guess. So I don't I don't misplace. I must have missed it. I must have missed it the first time around. That's a flap. That's nothing. Is it this one? Sorry about this. It's kind of like dead air. I know that, but I gotta find this rudder. There it is. That was the last one, of course. Okay, so there we go. I got the rudder. Let me zoom out so you guys can see the rudder. And I want to show you guys the mix, all right? So I, I get these questions about mix recipes, and I just want to show you guys a mix. So what I've got is I've got one aileron working, and I've got a rudder working. You guys see that? Let's just forget about the other aileron. We're just going to work with these two, and that's the aileron that's on channel four, okay? So that's the aileron on channel four. So my rudder is connected, and that's on channel one. So if I disconnect it, move, you see nothing happening. I'm going to put this on channel uh, four, or sorry, channel one, and now my rudder is working with the aileron stick, okay? That obviously is not what we want. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to go into channel one, and I'm going to change the source. I'm going to edit that, and I'm going to change the source to use the rudder. So now when I move the aileron stick, it does not move the rudder, but when I move the rudder, it moves, okay? So that, that'd be a normal movement on a plane, right? And this goes, guys, it can be motors, it can be flaps, it can be elevators, it can be elevator flap, rudder to elevator, it doesn't matter. When it comes to these mix recipes, it's all the same concept. You have to, and it's an important sentence. I'm about to give you a very important sentence, okay? The sentence is that you, you have to find the thing that you want to correct and mix it by the thing that does the correcting, okay? So in the case of a coordinated turn, let's talk about the rudder. We want to, uh, we, the rudder is the thing we wanna correct. So if you wanna do a coordinated turn just by moving your aileron, the thing that you wanna correct is the rudder. And the thing that's gonna do the correcting is the aileron stick. So the mix for that is very simple. When you say that sentence out loud to you, the mix becomes very simple. All you have to do is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy the aileron, I'm just gonna hit copy, and I'm gonna move up to the channel one and I'm gonna do pay insert after. And I'm gonna reduce the weight a little bit because I don't want a real heavy weight on this. Not that much, just down to 30, okay? So all I did in this case was I put a mix line that says the thing that I want to correct is the rudder and the thing that does the correcting is the aileron. So when I move my aileron stick, I want my rudder to turn. It's real simple now. If you look at the stick movement, you see how I've got the aileron moving and the rudder's moving with it? It's very simple. Now, if that rudder is going the wrong way, in this case, it's actually going cor correct. It's actually going the correct way. So the rudder is going to the right as the right aileron goes up. That is correct for a coordinated turn. So if, if that's the case, if it's going the wrong way, you go into the aileron, you just click edit, and you invert this. Oops. You invert it. You, you go 34 if that's your weight. Instead of 34, you do negative 34. And when you do that, the weight changes. See how now when I go to the right, the rudder goes to the left? That's all you have to do to flip them. All right, so that's a mix. That's a simple mix, and it can apply to any single combination you guys can come up with. It's funny about mix videos. When I do mix videos, it doesn't matter what set of recipes I've come up with. Somebody always says, but what about this? I'm not going to get, I don't want to be in that business with you guys. What I really want you to do is understand how to do the mix, right? Once you understand how to do the mix, then it should be easy. You, you say, well, what is the thing that I want to correct? In my case, the rudder. And what's the thing that does the correcting? My aileron stick does it. So here's, uh, to go back to Mr. Skyrider's example out, out, of, out of the gate, he said, I would like to know how to mix my twin engine and my rudder. Real simple. What is the thing that needs to be corrected? It's your throttle. So in order to do that, you have to have throttle on two channels. So you need two channels for throttle, right? You need a left throttle and a right throttle. And then, so you have to, in order to do differential throttle, they have to be on two different channels. So that's the thing that you want corrected, right? You either want to spool up the right side or you want to spool up the left side, right? That's the thing that needs corrected. And the thing that's going to correct it, rudder. So in that mix, what I would do is I'd have a throttle line. And if I did this, I'd have throttle on channel three. And all I would do is add a mix. I would do an insert after, and I would do rudder. And I would use my rudder input and not my rudder stick. And there you go. 
that mix right there, you put a rudder like that on both of your throttle lines and then you have differential thrust. All you have to do is move the, move the rudder and one motor will spool up, the other one won't do anything. That's it. So again, guys, it's really from a mixer standpoint, it's a very important sentence. I want you to write it down, repeat it, take a screenshot, put it in your notes somewhere. It's the thing that needs the correcting by the thing that does the correcting. So in my case, my example that I use, my rudder is what I want to be coordinated. That's the thing that needs to be adjusted, right? Because if I'm trying to cheat and not do coordinated turns, and don't leave a comment about, well, you should learn to fly with rudder. I will simply delete those because that's not the point here. The point is, how do you mix? Now, whether whatever your beliefs are about flying, great. That's, you know, that's not the moral of my story here. I'm just simply trying to show you guys how to do mixes. So I don't want to hear comments about learn to fly the plane. That's nonsense. And I will delete those. So the, the, the moral of the story is the rudder is what needs to be corrected for a coordinated turn. If you want to turn with the aileron. Okay. If you want it to be moved with the aileron, that's it. Now, all I really wanted to accomplish guys today was to show you that you can rearrange this stuff wherever you want to put it. You don't have to put it any, you don't have to put it in any particular order, right? You can move stuff around. If I wanted to take that rudder right now, that's on channel one and move it to channel six, it'd be as simple as me taking this wire off right here, moving it to channel six, and then going in my mixer and moving that rudder from channel one, down to channel six. And when I do that, my rudder works again. You see that? It's just got moved to channel six. Uh, no, There's no witchcraft here. There's the rudder wire, it's on channel six on the receiver, and I moved it to channel six on the mixer line. That's it, that's it. It doesn't matter if it's the output screen, the input screen, none of that stuff matters. Everything that I showed you, we never left the mixer screen. Not one time did we, we, we never left the mixer screen. We were on the mixer screen the whole time. Right, and I did that by design to show you guys that no matter what you think about inputs or what you think about outputs, when it comes to channel mapping, it all happens on the mix screen. We never left the mix screen. All I did was move wires around. I'm gonna show you one more and then we're gonna shut the video down. So my aileron right now, you can see it's on channel four. I'm gonna kill this throttle mix because we don't really need it. I just did that as an example, but I'm gonna kill the throttle mix. We're gonna kill this channel three thing. That's gonna go away. Okay, we're back to the only two lines I have on my mixer right now are aileron and rudder. So there's my one aileron, there's my one rudder. Now, if I wanted to put a second aileron, I could take it and put it on channel three. And people go, well, that's the throttle channel. Doesn't matter, <laughs> doesn't matter, doesn't matter. But I'm gonna just hit move, right there is move, and I'm gonna move my aileron now to channel three, and I'm gonna hit paste, there we go. My aileron now is on channel three, it's on channel three on this receiver, and there it goes. When I move that stick, there goes the aileron. It's happening right in front of your eyes. No mystery. It's just the, ma the mapping is the mixer to the pins on the receiver. Again, the caveat is this is a stabilized receiver, so it needs to know where your elevator and aileron is so that if something perturbs it, if it gets moved, it has to ch say, well, if I'm rolling, I need to move my ailerons. That's why these are marked. But on any other open TX, edge TX type receiver, you don't need to worry about the order. You can put this stuff in whatever order you want. If I wanted to, I can take channel six, my rudder, and I can move it all the way up to channel one just because I felt like it, because I felt like being a rebel. So now my rudder's on channel one. I'll disconnect it from channel six, put it on channel one, move my rudder around, and there you go. It doesn't matter. It's a, the, as far as the radio is concerned, it doesn't know about ailerons or elevators or rudders. It simply knows that you have a physical thing. We apply a label to it and we attach that physical label, that thing to an output channel on our mixer. That's all the radio knows. That's all it cares about. It doesn't care about order. It doesn't mean anything. All right, guys, that's it. That is my, my uh, masterclass on channel mapping for Edge TX. I wanted this to be a very focused video without getting into too many, too many other topics. I hope from now on, if I get questions about channel mapping, I'm just gonna direct people to this, this video and I hope you guys do the same because I know for people coming from other systems, that's not the way it works. I get it, you know, I totally understand that, but you have to kind of relearn a little bit, right? On, on Edge TX, things are a little bit different than maybe what you're used to. So that's the way it works. 
on Edge TX and no debate. <laughs> I've had people debate this, no, no debate. That's the way it works. You just saw it. It's all video evidence here. So um, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. I don't really see any questions. It looks like everybody, you know, in terms of, you know, doesn't I don't see any questions coming in. So there's nothing for me to answer. Um, it just says uh, I, a couple comments. What if you want it on a switch? You can add a switch, Mr. Skyrider. If you want to add a switch, you can do that too. Um, if you want to add flaps on a switch, you can do that. Instead of using an input source, you just use a switch instead. It's the same thing. Uh, you just change the source. Uh, Patrick says good stuff. Yeah, thanks, Patrick. Glad you liked it. And uh, Mr. Skywriter says awesome. Thanks. And, and Von Live Tech says thumbs up. All right, guys, that's it. That's all I've got for today. Hope you like the content. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you like this kind of material, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.